Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we are going to take another look at the best decks in standard best of one as part of our weekly metagame breakdown. We are going to look at the top decks pushing people up to mythic rank, uh, and we're going to cover kind of a metagame in terms of the distribution of decks, as well as the win rates of specific decks themselves. I'll paste all these deck lists in the video description down below, so if you want to copy paste, you can easily get them there. There'll be timestamps, so you can jump around the video however you choose. Uh, as always, we get the data from Untap GG, what you see on the screen, companion tool that runs alongside Arena's client, aggregates your win rates with other users, gives a whole bunch of cool stats. You can use it for uh, drafting help, and then it's also got just cool things with collection. Link for Untapped is in the video description as well. Um, so we'll jump into it with the popularity of the day. Do you just want to put out a quick comment? We are less than 250 subs away from 15,000 on the channel. If you want to help out the channel, if you enjoy this content, free way to do so is hit that sub button. Likes and comments, always greatly appreciated. Helping me try to beat the, the biggest boss battle, the YouTube overlords. So greatly appreciated if you can. Uh, but let's jump into it. Popularity of the day. Uh, things have kind of flattened a bit. We've had at one point the Rakdos aggro deck be like... 40% of the meadow, like you see down here in the bottom left corner. We'll take a look in a sec. But it's down to about 12%. So this is the Leyline aggro deck. A very popular deck when it came out. I can win on turn two. It is a, a deck that is polarizing the format in the sense that you do have to be able to react on turn one. Uh, otherwise, you might be dead. Wizards did come out and announce in one of their recent arena updates that they are keeping an eye on ley lines. So whether that means there's a ban or not, uh, it is something that is at least on the watch list. So be mindful of that. Boros Auras is like a Boros Mice deck that's playing Auras. Uh, recently, some of them are shifting to Mardu, uh, which is basically the same deck with the Kalos Cell Sword to fling the creature at them because it's fling season. Mono Black Midrange is usually the Bloodletter combo. So we have it about 6%, Mono Black Discard about 6%, the Oculus deck about 5%. Amir Toxic is coming up in terms of win rate, in terms of play rate, but the win rate is relatively low. Um, but it's a deck that people are trying out. Mono White Control, 3%, and then Azorius Control, 3%. We can look at just like the trajectory of the Rakdos Aggro deck, 40% to at one point, even starting the season again up to 30, and it's kind of come down. We've seen Boros Aggro kind of intertwine it, pass it, and then kind of fall down below it, but uh, interesting to see nonetheless. Decks like Selesnia Rabbits have largely fallen off. Its worst matchup was the red base decks, I found, uh, and with it being so much more prevalent, it, it has a hard time. It doesn't really, it's not really a deck that interacts. There was like a, a week or a day when Selesnia Toxic did very well, but then, relatively speaking, it's been pretty low in terms of just like breaking 50%. So Diamond Mythic rank, 160,000 games played. And we're going to jump into it. Different Demir deck is the top deck of the week. So this is Demir uh, Doomsday. Now, not the legacy vintage Doomsday. No three mana black enchantment, rearrange all but the bottom five cards of your library when on the turn. Uh, so this one is using Doomsday Excruciator. So similar concept, but six black, 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 black. Uh, maybe one too many black mana symbols there, but flying 6-6 six, six, enters a battlefield. Each player exiles all but the bottom six cards of their library face down. Beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card. This is being treated as kind of a combo deck. So you cast the Doomsday Excruciator with Jace out, and then you mill them the remaining cards. Uh, the rest of the deck is a Demir Control deck. So you're going to have Cut Downs, Disfigures, Anoint with Afflictions, Go for the Throats, Devious Cover-Ups as a Sweeper. Question I've been putting out there. Are you team cut down or team go for, or disfigure for your one mana interaction spell? I think I'm team cut down, but still, let me know what you think. Uh, Phantom Interference, cheap counter that can make a token, three steps ahead, draw discard, create a token, counter spell, so flexible there. So just kind of card advantage, counters, removal. Intrude of the Mind is a card we haven't seen too much of, uh, but it is kind of like a factor fiction that you get a counter off the pile that they don't choose. Uh, and then caverns that also help you stick your doomsday excruciators. Cool deck there. We then go to mono black midrange. Uh, so this is the unstoppable slasher bloodletter of Aklazot's combo. So how it works, bloodletter doubles the amount of damage. Unstoppable slasher makes your opponent lose half their life if it connects. 
Well, with Blood Letter, they lose all their life. You also can play it nicely with Unholy Annex here. Uh, with the Annex itself, it normally has a downside when you draw cards by use, losing two life, but when you have a demon out, so Blood Letter, the demon from it, uh, your opponent actually loses two life, you gain two life. If you have Blood Letter out, it actually deals four. So it doubles up that damage there. Jellies, Lilies, uh, just a bunch of removal with some Bat Disruption. One thing I'd say, like with the mana base, you could probably get away with playing like either two mirror X, two mirror pool, or a fountain port, not mirror. Pool. Uh, just to kind of have some utility in your mana base. If the Doomsday Excruciator deck can play some other lands, then this one can at least accommodate a couple utility lines. Leyline, is that an exact same win rate? Exact same win rate. So Rakdos Leyline. Uh, it's kind of cheating. It's really mono red ley line. This one's at 62.7. So if you're a skilled gamer, you have this in your opening hand always. Uh, this one here is just opting to go with mountains. You can play some of the uh, fast lines and pain lines if you want. To have the black splash on the off chance you want to cast Alice Cell Sword is kind of your fail safe. Uh, the turn two combo is usually Scamp or Heartfire Hero. Uh, and then you pump it with in Turn Inside Out and the Monstrous Rage, and then it kills them that way. Um, so notably with this, the Scamp would fling itself. With the Heartfire Hero, it would go to 2 with the target, then 6, and 6, and 5. So it wouldn't. So you'd have to do Heartfire Hero, um, one of these, so that goes to 5. It hits them for five. Oh uh, no, so it'd be seven. So two, six, that's eight. Hit them for eight and then fling. So it's not quite enough that way there. You'd have to use the scamp line um, because you wouldn't get through enough damage that way there. But scamp is kind of the, the turn one enabler. Quick maths. Otherwise, just a red based aggressive deck. We're seeing shock in here to kind of hedge against the mirrors just to have some interaction over my. Um, the, the other two mana mouse. Mono red aggro. So this is not the most sequential, but I want to show a different variation of what people are trying out. So this is more of what we've historically seen as these red-based aggro decks. Some amount of burn, of uh, shock, lightning strike helps you in the that like mirror because you do have interaction for their threats. Obliterating bolt is an exile effect. Uh, this version's on the three one drops, Heartfire Hero, Hired Claw, and Monastery Swiss Sphere. Some squeeze in here with one Godric. And then Emberheart Challenger and Manifold Mouse. So no uh, slick shot show off. Instead, going for the mouse package. Uh, Witch Stalker Frenzies. And then Rockface Village can also haste out like Hired Claw, all your mice. So it basically makes it so all your non haste creatures can have haste. Then go to Boros Auras, kind of the Mardu Auras if you want. So the other versions are just playing the fling effect, but. All the mice with Valiant, so your Heartfire Heroes, your Ember Heart Challengers will trigger off any of your um, enchantments. So Shelter by Ghost being removal with Lifelink can help you race, especially with the Double Strike effect. Triggers Valiant, protect your creatures with Shard Mage Rescue, put counters on things with Optimistic Scavenger. You have Aerial Armor to bump your, your team up. This one's playing 6-1 mana removal spells between Elspeth Smite and Shock. Feather of Flight can be Evasion as well. Fortunately, because we don't have Verge, we got to play Thran Portal in the list. Moving on, we go to Orzov Reanimator, 60% with this one here. So this deck is looking to bring back either Overlord of the Mistmoors or Big Daddy Valgavoth. Might be a girl, I don't know. Um, but you're doing that by self-milling, Overlord of Balemark, draw discard with Split Skin Doll. You have the Bitter Triumph to discard, Liliana to discard. And then Rise of the Moth as a way to reanimate. You can also Beseech the Mirror by sacrificing uh, like this. Beseech is an interesting one. You can also technically sacrifice the Overlord as well. So I guess that gives you some amount of targets. Otherwise, it's just a much cheaper removal. Kind of pay it off. Five Color Domain. So there's a couple different versions we'll look at. So this is kind of an update on the tried and true version, but I would say that what this one's doing nicely is adapting to best of one. A lot of times people will just copy paste the best three list. You'll notice that they're pre-boarding not on my watch as a concession to the very aggressive decks along with Pyroclasm. So cheap effect, two damage each creature, good at being a two mana sweeper. 
uh, against a lot of the hyper aggressive decks. Sorry, my voice is still catching up from COVID. Um, so Haunt helps you ramp. You got your Archangels, Atraxas, normal domain things outside of that. But really interesting, just kind of focusing on this package here in terms of dealing with the early aggression. There's also, um, they're calling it like Overlord Control. In best of three, I typically will play the Red Overlord over Atraxa. Uh, no Jace in best of three. But that one's picking up some popularity in the MTGO tournament scene, which we did put out an MTGO tournament report. Uh, so that one there, we'll do one additional standard video per week focusing on tournament results outside of MTG Arena. So we covered that one there. Uh, this one here, it's going to have Laydown Arms as cheap removal along with Get Lost. Temporary Lockdowns as cheap sweepers. Uh, similar, just kind of ramping up. Your Ley Lines are cheap removal. Playing your top end, Overlord, Atraxa. Herd migrations mixed into there. Chase can also mill out your opponent. Uh, split on King, kind of overlord beats. You then go to mono white control. So this one here, caretaker talent deck. Uh, so you have caretaker's talent and enduring innocence. Interesting the numbers on these. Being usually this is a full four of each. Uh, instead, opting to play some Toby bestie befriend. So enter as you create a 4-4 beast, this creature can't attack or block alone as long as you control four more creatures, tokens you have flying. I would personally probably play more of these, at least for care caretakers, like three, I'd maybe just cut two of these, up these 1-1. One, one. Um, Season of the Burrow, like some of this, they're very strong top end, but it is a little bit pricey. Um, in terms of your five drops, I would say. Like, you do have this that can make a token on two, so that's there. Your Overlord of the Mistmores is here on four. So your curve's a little bit different. This is basically coming here. This is coming here. Um, this is technically a two drop. I think just having these to kind of keep the, the value train going. Your Fountain Port for the similar kind of approach. I just don't know if you necessarily need the Ghostly Dancer. It feels a little win more. <clears throat> just play a little bit more early interaction. Stay alive earlier would be my my guess. Then go to four color reanimator, squirming emergence deck. So this one's at 56%. So the core of this deck is you want to self-mill, self-loot, uh Flaji, Founding, Picklock Prankster, Whale of Forgotten, always to kind of self-mill, counter spell slash manifest a dread effect. Just the reality, you can technically manifest any of these big creatures, flip them over that way there. Uh, but you're basically using Squirming Emergence to reanimate Lumra that refills all your lines from the graveyard, Atraxa, or Vaglavoth. Vagla uh, Cruelty Gigs can also reanimate. And also with the Squirming Emergence hit one with the Multiverse, kind of get that Omniscience at home effect. Moving on, we have Boros Caretaker. So 56%. So this version here, we have Brotherhood's End as your three mana sweeper. Again, built around Caretaker's Talent. This was kind of the Original Caretaker's deck between Caretaker's Talent or Brass Forge as the engine. And a cheap removal here between Torch, a Braid, Get Lost, Lightning Helix, Season of the Burrow, Sunfall on the top end. Generally, you'll see Elspeth uh, in, in place of the Season of the Burrow. Season can return back your Caretaker's Talents. Um, the Brothers Hoods and would hit Elspeth, but you'll typically see that that being included. You'll sometimes see Beza being included as a life gain enabler. Uh, all things to kind of consider in those slots. Kazuli Flanker uh, for Graveyard Hate. You've seen a couple Graveyard Focused Reanimator decks, so it can hit that way there. Some life gain against the aggressive decks, or just be a flash threat in there. Uh, Fountain Ports, Myrex, Restless Biovac, so a lot of utility lines, mana base. Then go to Zorius Oculus, so 54%. So in previous week, I think there was a version playing some Elspeth Smite or the other kind of bounce effect. I do think with this deck here, you do want one more piece or one or two more pieces of cheap interaction in the one mana slot. There's a three mana Farah's something that costs uh, two less to bounce a creature if that creature is attacking. That's a, a reasonable one. It sets you up with Surveil as well. Uh, you can do Elspeth Smite, just different ways to interact early. For this deck, again, kind of milling over. Uh, at Horan Oculus or Hadi Jin, and then reanimating them with Recommission or Helping Hand. Otherwise, it's just a tempo focus deck, counter spells, card draws, bounce effect for your opponent's creatures. And lastly, this was an so this one's from Raging Clues. They went 17 and 3 into Mythic Rank. Uh, interesting take on Demir for the best of one format. 
So no Mosswood Dread Knight, no Glissas in this one here. Uh, you could ignore the sideboard for this best of one. Um, there's just a couple cards here, likely kind of was bouncing between it, the two formats. This one here is heavier control, kind of ramp focused. So Overlord of the Haunt Woods, full deadly cover up package, Aklazots, you have Virtue for life gain, Ancient Cornucopia for life gain, up the Beanstalk for card advantage, bunch of cheaper removal with Anoint Affliction, go for the throat, nowhere to run, which gets around the protection of the Auras deck. The rest for Hand Hate, Urgent Necropsy as flexible removal. And then you have Outrageous Robbery as a win condition amongst these other big. Restless Cottage could also be a win condition. So interesting kind of take. The traditional Golgari deck was about 53% as the highest of the variance of the win rates for Golgari. So I thought we'd focus on that here as it's a little bit of a unique build that seems to be working pretty well in the back. That's it for the week. Let me know what you think, what you've been playing. Like I said, if you can, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 15,000, which is the goal I have for 2024. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you have a great one. And